In this video, we're going to talk about differential equations. That is an equation that has one or more derivatives. It might be the first derivative, might be the second derivative, something higher. Um, today, we're only going to talk about what's called first order differential equations. That is where you have only the first derivative. In fact, we'll have only these simple kinds here where the derivative of y is some function of x or the derivative of y is some function of y, or the derivative of y is some function of both x and y. So here's some examples. dy dx is 2x is the function of x. Here, y cubed, function of y. And here, negative x over y, function of both x and y. To solve a differential equation means to find a function y, function of x, that satisfies the equation. So if you put this y of x into the equation, the equation is true. Here's an example. This is the first kind of equation where you have dy dx is a function of x. We know how to solve these already. We know a function whose derivative is 2x. That would be x squared. In fact, x squared plus c for any constant c would give us this derivative 2x. So those functions x squared plus c are our solutions. In fact, those are the only solutions. We saw that as a corollary of the mean value theorem back in calculus one. Anytime you have a differential equation of that form, dy dx is a function of x alone, you find the solution simply by computing the antiderivative of f f. So the indefinite integral or antiderivative of f of x are the solutions to that equation. If you have a y involved, either derivative is a function of y alone or if it's a function of both x and y, sometimes you might be able to solve uh, those kinds of differential equations using a method called separation of variables. That's what we're going to talk about today. There's a whole other class on differential equations that we'll talk about more general solution techniques for other kinds of examples. Let me so show you an example of what separation of variables looks like. So here's our differential equation. Derivative of y is negative x over y. Now this is what it's going to look like. This is not the official theorem. This is just sort of the uh, kind of a trick, I guess. Um, we're going to pretend as if this dy dx, this derivative, uh, pretend this is where it's fraction. And it's not, of course. As you know, dy dx is a fixed unit for the derivative, but Let's just pretend it's a fraction, and we're going to kind of cross multiply here. We're going to move this y over to the other side. We're going to move this dx to the other side and get this equation right here. Now, this equation is, is nonsense. It doesn't mean anything because dy by itself and dx by itself doesn't mean anything. But uh, we're just going to pretend like this has some sort of sense, and we're going to stick an integral symbol on the front on both sides and integrate that. And it turns out that. Uh, this process actually gives you the, the right answer. I'm not going to prove the theorem, but I'll state the theorem in a minute that justifies this going from this derivative here to this equation there. But anyway, let's just pretend this all works out. And we're going to integrate this uh, both sides of this equation. And integral of y is, um, well, it looks like I already canceled the half integral of y is y squared over 2, and the integral of negative x is negative x squared over 2, and I canceled out those halves already. And then I'm going to solve this equation for y, so just take the square root of both sides. I'll get y is plus or minus the square root of uh, c minus x squared. Change the order there a little bit. Now we could stop there, or we could also, um, instead of solving for y, if we rewrite this equation just by adding the x squared to both sides, we get this equation, x squared plus y squared equals c. And you can tell, uh, hopefully you recognize that equation. That's the equation of a circle um, centered at the origin of radius squared of c. So if you have the derivative of your function is negative x over y, then the function you're looking at is really a circle. All right. So. Here's the official statement of separation of variables. If a differential equation can be written in this format, then it's called separable. So you can see that um, we have a function of both x and y on this side, but it can be separated 
into the product of two functions, g, a function of x alone, and h, a function of y alone. And so we've kind of separated the x part and the y part, and we have a product of an x function and a y function. And that's not always the case. You can't always separate any, anything. Um, if, you, if you have just some sort of function of both x and y over here, sometimes it's separable, sometimes it's not. If it is separable, then you can always find the solutions of this by solving this integral equation instead. So the y's that satisfy this integral equation are the same y's that satisfy this differential equation up here. It's almost like you've moved the h over, so you've divided both sides by h of y, and you've moved the x over, or the dx, sorry, you move the dx to the other side, and then you integrate it. Now, it's not really what, what's happening, um, but that's a, a way to kind of help you remember the process. You can think of this as kind of, of moving things back and forth in the equation and then integrating. Now this uh, will, once you integrate this, you're going to get y implicitly as a, a function of x. You might be able to solve the resulting equation for y like we did above, and sometimes you, you can't. Now there's one little hiccup here. I said that this integral equation gives you all the solutions of the differential equation. That's not exactly true because we have introduced here a, a division by this h of y. If h of y is the zero function, not just that h of y is zero once in a while, but h of y is, is zero all the time, then um, this integral here on the left never makes sense because you're always divided by zero. In other words, this solution technique eliminates the possibility of h of y being zero, which sometimes um, you might actually have a solution where that's the case. Remember, we're thinking here of y as a function of x, so h of y is really a composition, and it's possible that this composition, h of y, is the zero function, even though h itself and y itself are not the zero function. So it's not immediately obvious sometimes that that's the case. If y happens to be a constant function where you get zero in that composition with h, then that y is in fact a solution to the differential equation. It's not a solution that will come up out of this integral. Um, so you kind of have to think about that separately. Now normally we don't really care about that too much because that only happens when y is a constant function that happens to be a solution to the differential equation. And normally those are not the important ones. So I'm going to more or less ignore that. There'll be one place where I'll, I'll mention it, but we're going to kind of ignore this subtle point. I'll leave that for the differential equations class. <coughs> All right. In example three, we're going to look at the differential equation uh, dy dx equals y. Now you know a function that is its own derivative already. Um, that's the exponential function base e. And we'll see <coughs> um, in general what functions can be their own derivative. Now this is a separable differential equation where we think of the x part as just being 1 and the h part as being y. And so the solution is given by integrating 1 over y and saying that equal to the integral of 1. Provided of course y itself is not the zero function. I'll mention that a little bit later. So we integrate 1 over y, we get the natural log of the absolute value of y. We integrate 1, and we get x, and x plus c. And now we're going to solve this for y. So uh, convert here to an exponential equation. Absolute value of y is e to the x plus c. Or in other words, y is plus or minus e to the x plus c. It's possible to rewrite these solutions. So using the laws of exponents, we can rewrite it as y equals plus or minus e to the x times e to the c. Now remember, c is just any arbitrary constant. So e to the c is some sort of arbitrary positive constant. e to the c can never be negative or zero, but you can get any positive number that looks like e to the c. And then when you add this plus or minus, you can get any arbitrary non-zero constant. So we could rewrite this as y equals some k times e to the x, where k is arbitrary non-zero constant. I changed the letter k here just because it's different from the c, though you could just put a c there as well. c is just arbitrary constant anyway. Now, the what about, I said here, 
k, k is an arbitrary non-zero constant, what about k being zero? If k equals zero, you'd get y equals zero here. y is the zero function. And that actually is a solution to the differential equation. The derivative of the zero function is the zero function again itself. So we get this is our general solution. If uh, the derivative of y is equal to y itself, then y has to be a constant multiple of the exponential function base e. And that's what I said here to kind of summarize. If you have a function f such that f prime is equal to f itself, then f has to be a constant times e to the x. In example four, we're going to look at this differential equation. And this is separable. And so I'm going to uh, move some stuff around. Now this is not written in the format we're used to, but we could move stuff around and get it in that format. I'm going to leave the square root of y on this y side. I'm going to move the 2 square root of x over to the other side. Just divide both sides by 2 square root of x. And then I'll do my little trick of, of moving the dx over and sticking integral on there and, and everything works out. So this is the integral equation I get. And the integral of the square root of y is 2 thirds times y to the 3 halves power. The integral of 1 over 2 square root of x is the square root of x. And I'm going to solve that for y. Just multiply both sides by 3 halves. And um, so I got 3 halves square root of x. I could put 3 halves c here. Um, I've actually kind of uh, changed the c here. This is, um, you know, my original c would really be multiplied by 3 halves here, and I just replaced it with c again, since it's still an arbitrary constant. Um, you, could, you could leave the 3 halves there if you want. Either way is fine. And then you got to get rid of this uh, 3 halves power by raising both sides to the 2 thirds, and that's what we have here. So this is the solution to this differential equation. Um, notice here that the plus c is inside this 2 thirds power. So it's not okay to solve these integrals and solve for y and then stick a plus c on the end somewhere. The plus c needs to come in here at this integral stage. Now you could put the plus c on the x side, you could put it on the y side if you want, though normally we're solving for y. You could put it on both, but you don't really need to. If you had a constant on both sides, you could always move it to one or the other. So we'll usually just put the constant on the x side. Our goal here is to solve for y, so you might as well just put it there. But you do need to put it, as soon as you've taken the integral, you need to put this constant here. And it might end up inside, like here, the c is inside this 2 thirds power. It's not okay just to move it outside. Okay, example five. We got this differential equation right here. And uh, we can make our life a little simpler by using the laws of exponents to simplify that. It simplifies to this guy. So the derivative of y is e to the x divided by e to the 2y. So this is separable. So the g of x part is e to the x. And the h of y is 1 over e to the 2y. And so we integrate the reciprocal of h. So remember, h was already on the bottom. So we kind of move this over to the y side. And, and there it is. And then the e to the x is over here on the x side. So when we integrate that, here's the integral. Now we're going to solve for y, so multiply both sides by 2. Again, I didn't bother putting a 2 on the c. c is just any arbitrary constant, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. And I get 2y is, is natural log of 2e to the x plus c. And then divide both sides by 2. Common mistake in this kind of question is to stick absolute values in here. And why would you think such a thing? Well, let's see. We had an example uh, right up here. Natural log of the absolute value. And your teachers probably emphasize that, so you have that in your brain. Now, that absolute value comes in when you integrate this guy, 1 over y, or 1 over x, or 1 over anything. You get natural log of the absolute value. That's the only time that natural log of the absolute value comes up. Here, there is no integral of 1 over x, or 1 over y, or anything like that. You just have this exponential equation, and you're trying to solve for y. And so you're going to take the natural log of both sides. There's no absolute value involved. So don't try to insert uh, the absolute value where it doesn't belong. OK, so here's our differential equation in example 6. Not immediately obvious that this is separable. But 
if you factor that right hand side, uh, you can see that it does actually separate into an x function times a y function. You can use <coughs> factoring by grouping here if you want to. So here's my little factorization. So first off, these first two terms, there's an x in common, so I factored an x out and it leaves y plus 3. In this second two, um, the third and fourth term here, there's a negative 2 in common, so I factored out negative 2 and what's left was, again, y plus 3. So now I factored out y plus 3 from these two terms and I got x minus 2 times y plus 3. So this is the h part, y plus 3. So we're going to integrate 1 over h right there. And then this is the, the g of x part, we integrate that. All right, now here's another log of the absolute value because we're integrating 1 over something. And I'm going to solve this equation for y. Um, convert to exponential here. Abs get rid of the absolute values by putting plus or minus and then we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So this is what we get here. Now similar to what we did with that dy dx equals y where we got k times e to the x, it is possible to, to rewrite this a little bit using the laws of exponents and, and think about what the constant is. And so you can write this as negative 3 plus k e to the x squared over 2 minus 2x. And this is the most general solution. In fact, k equals 0 does work here. k equals 0 gives you the solution y equals negative 3. So y is a constant function. And that's one, uh, that solution is eliminated by this uh, integration here. That you have to check separately. Okay, that's that special technical little point I talked about right at the beginning that I'm going to ignore most of the time. Alright, so those are some examples of differential equations. Sometimes you have what's called an initial value problem. That is a differential equation plus some sort of initial conditions. Initial conditions are values of either the solution y or the derivatives of y at some specific x values. And oftentimes those initial conditions let us solve for the plus c. So instead of getting a whole family of solutions, you get one specific unique solution. Let me show you an example of that. So we got a differential equation, dy dx equals negative y squared, and then we have a particular value of y. When x is 0, y is a half. That's going to allow us to figure out uh, exactly what the plus c needs to equal to to give us this. Now this is a separable differential equation where the g of x part is 1 and the h of y part is the negative y squared. So I'm going to go ahead and move the y part over to the other side and integrate. And so the integral of 1 over negative y squared is 1 over y. Integral of 1 is x plus c. So this is my answer. I'm going to solve that for y and I get y equals 1 over x plus c. That's the general solution to the differential equation. Now I'm going to take my initial condition and substitute the x and y in here and figure out what c is. So I'm going to uh, this says y of 0 equals a half, says x equals 0 and y equals a half. So I'm going to put 0 in place of x, I'm going to put a half in place of y, I'm going to solve that for c, I'm going to see that c is equal to 2. So the solution to this initial value problem is this equation, y equals 1 over x plus 2. That's actually a unique solution for that. Okay, so far I've talked about solving differential equations by hand. Sage also has a command that can solve some differential equations. It's called DE solve. So right here, not D solve, like you're going to unsolve it or something, but DE for differential equation solver. It's similar to the solve command we learned back in Calculus 1. Um, you have to put in two things to this command, an equation to solve. Uh, which is going to be a differential equation in this case. There will be a derivative in there somewhere. Remember an equation in Sage needs a double equal sign all the time. And then you have to tell it what variable to solve for. Now also, it's important that you tell Sage that y is a function of x. Alright, so here's back to example 3 again. dy dx equals y. So I tell Sage y is a function of x. This is the line that does that. We've seen that in previous videos. And then um, you type de solve, parentheses, and here's the differential equation. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to y. And notice the double equal sign. We're trying to solve that for y. And I'm going to go ahead and use the show command here 
to show the answer in a nicer way. Sage tells me the answer is c times e to the x. Uh, notice here in this output, it puts a little underscore in front of the c. Uh, I think it does that just to make sure it doesn't conflict with any other variables, like maybe you, you see somewhere else. And so they stick this underscore on there just to make it different. Um, I'm not sure about that, but anyway, you can kind of ignore the underscore there. Remember our answer was constant times e to the x, that's what we got here. All right, here's example four again. So I told it y was a function of x. I type de solve, I type the differential equation just like it is, remembering double equal sign, and then the dy dx I just type out as derivative of y comma x. I wanna solve that for y. And here's the answer. And notice that this is an implicit solution. Um, for y, I would still need to try to solve this for y. So I went ahead and, and tried to get Sage to solve it for us. So I declared the variable c. I copied and pasted this solution right here. Here's the answer from de solve. Copied and pasted here. Now I'm in the regular solver. I replaced the underscore c with just plain c because I didn't really want to think about the underscore. I declared c to be a variable. I'm trying to solve this thing for y. And here's the answer that comes out. And you can see that it didn't really finish. It has y on this side, but there's another y on this side. So it, it didn't really solve this completely. This is still an implicit solution. I'm not sure why Sage can't solve this one. Um, I mean, we could solve this by hand, just move this y over and, and fiddle around with the power somewhat. Um, but anyway, Sage isn't able to do all the algebra, I guess. Here's example five. So y is a function of x, use de solve on that differential equation. Here's the answer that Sage gives me. Again, this is an implicit solution. So I'm going to try to solve for y again. I'll go ahead and let Sage try it. So I said Sage, I told Sage that c is a variable. I copied and pasted the answer from up here. And I got rid of the underscore just because I didn't like it. Tried to solve for y and I get this answer down here two answers actually. Uh, a little bit strange, this first one is the log of a negative number, I and mean, when you got the square root of something, that's positive. So this is a log of negative number, which is not defined in, in terms of real numbers anyway. So we can kind of ignore that one. We'll just take this guy. Remember what our solution was, one half natural log two e to the x plus c. Um, and remember in Sage, log is not log base 10, It's uh, natural log, log base e, so that's the same. We got the same half, we got 2e to the x there. They went ahead and put uh, 2c, um, and I ignored that 2 on the c since c is an arbitrary constant. So this is the, the same answer here. All right, back to example six. Y is a function of x, de solve of that differential equation. Here's the answer that comes out. Uh, compare that to what we got here and other than the c changing to, to k. Um, these are the same, they don't look the same, uh, but if you multiply this out, notice we got e to the this messy power multiplied by this difference. If you distribute, you'll get this e, this exponential times c, that's this part here, the exponential times the constant, and then you'll have minus three times this exponential times the exponential. Notice that the powers here on this side and this side, those are opposite. So when you multiply e to the negative half x squared plus two x times e to the positive half x squared minus two x, those powers uh, cancel out and you get e to the zero, which is one. And so this exponential times this negative three business gives you negative three. So if you distribute this and simplify, you do in fact get the same thing. Sage is also able to solve an initial value problem. It's the same command, de solve. You just add an extra piece of information at the end. Um, if you have the information like this, uh, a particular point, x0 and y0 that's given. So put that in square brackets. So I'll show you example seven again. Y is a function of x, de solve. Type in the differential equation, just like it is, with the double equal sign. Tell it you want to solve for y, and then you put another comma, and this is where you input the initial condition. x is zero, 
and y is a half. So you put square bracket, zero for x, half for y in the square bracket. And you run that, and this is the answer you get. Now, I don't know why Sage gives us an implicit solution here. Um, this is not hard to solve for y. You just swap the bottom with this other side of the equation over here. Um, Sage is able to solve this. Here I asked Sage to solve it for me, and it did. So y is 1 over x plus 2, same, uh, same solution we got before. Now, like I mentioned, there's a whole class called differential equations that will introduce you to more complex equations and more complex solution methods. The next time, um, we will look at how to approximate solutions numerically using Euler's method, but I'll leave more complicated stuff to your differential equations professor.